Okay, so everything happened because uh, one of our minister, okay, Indrani Raja, okay, he she shared that the CBD actually has plays a very important role, okay, in sustaining Singapore's economy competitiveness, right? You know, in CBD, that's where, uh, especially Singapore and even Asia, we do business, okay? Majority of the MNCs, we are actually all there, right? Uh, government point of view, they want to continue to rejuvenate the city center, especially of CBD, by injecting more mixed use. So you will you will foresee more mixed development coming up, including arts and cultural programs. Okay, at the same time, they want to provide a greater variety of housing options uh, to ensure vibrant outside office hour. You know, uh, the typical CBD ten years ago probably will be uh, just office space. Uh, weekend, you go there, you totally don't see anybody because people don't go there on a Sunday. But today, when you go visit, for example, you visit Wallet, you visit Tanjong Paga MRT station, you realize even on the weekend, there's people there doing activities, there's restaurants all opening up. So because of all these initiatives, uh, there's actually things already happening. Right, so let me just give you some updates. So there's this article from HPROC, okay, uh, that talks about renewal in Singapore CBD, a new housing option, okay, in our CBD area. So of course, all of you probably would have heard of this Greater Southern Waterfront. You also heard a lot of times from different projects talking about URAs, work, leave, and play. And all these are actually happening in our CBD area, okay. So what happened is that government uh, back one, two years ago, they introduced, you see the bottom right, this thing called the CBD incentive scheme, right? So if you read the article that I underlined in red, I highlighted, okay? So, so far, okay, as of uh, April 5th last year, they already received 12 outline application under this incentive scheme, okay? Uh, it has already been given approval, okay? So I, I didn't get the latest update, I believe, there's more in-principle approval, okay, based on the overwhelming response. So in short, what is this CBD incentive scheme? Basically, uh, government is trying to give uh, more uh, subsidies. They're going to add on a uh, space GFA into developers whereby they rebuild the, their old building, old offices, okay? So that's why you have got more applicants coming from developer wanting to tear down their 20 years old building and rebuild into a new project like uh, Newport residences. Okay, on top of that, URA 2021, they actually have got this uh, long-term plan review, LTPR, on top of this URA master plan. So what is this thing? Okay, how does it work? Basically, it's the review of a long-term plan every 10 years that helps guide Singapore development over the next 50 years. So, you know, the thing about Singapore, uh, our government, they always don't just plan 10, 15 years again ahead okay for this time okay with this ltpr they actually path the the plans ahead for the next 50 years and beyond so they really really think very far so you know every time when they have got all these policy change okay new direction they will make sure it happen so back in uh, master plan 2019 you realize that they actually focus on downtown and orchard road they want us to accommodate a wider diversity of use, more jobs, more business, city living options. You see, uh, they try to bring residents or residential living into CBD, right? They want to make it more delightful streets and public space. So this is what they are trying to focus, okay, for the next few years for sure. And LTPR plus uh, this master plan shaping, that's actually the future of our master plan in CBD, okay? Live, work, and play in downtown core. Just in case you do not know where is you do not know where is downtown core. Uh, it's actually coming all the way from Bugis, uh, Midtown area, all the way to Marina Bay, and also towards the bottom left. Okay, where you have got your CBD, Shenton Way, Anson area. And if you look at this transformation potentially going to happen, okay, on the left-hand side, okay, you see this picture whereby majority are actually blue color, so all these are, are office spaces, they're going to put in more residential spaces and also more mixed use in this downtown future. They're going to transform this CBD into a vibrant and mixed use development. Okay, in terms of creativity, uh, you, if you realize that uh, there's a lot of white sites, 
okay, in this downtown core area. Basically, white sites uh, allow developer to put in uh, different kind of mixed use, okay, whether is it hotel, service apartment, shopping center, residential, okay, they want to make it as vibrant as possible. Okay, one uh, good example that is coming up is actually the Marina View plot, okay, all the white sites are uh, in this photo as shown. In terms of connectivity, right, so uh, you, you realize there is already in place some MRT station coming all the way from Outram, which is the interchange to Maxwell, Shenton, Marina Bay, Marina South, so and so forth. Okay, all these are already happening in the plans already. And uh, this new station in CBD, right, uh, the one beside Maxwell and also Shenton Way, right, this will add on connectivity within the CBD. So what's really missing here, okay, uh, will be all this extension coming really, really soon. Okay, so uh, to emphasize a little bit more uh, for Newport will be this MRT station called Prince Edward, right? So Prince Edward, later I'll share a little bit more about the MRT station. This is probably the nearest MRT stop, okay, to Newport residents. Okay, it will bring you to Harbourfront, Marina Bay, so on and so forth. Right, so also we, we put in the traveling time here, right, coming from New, uh, sorry, Newport, which is Prince Edward. Potentially, you can reach one north in less than 20 minutes, reach Paya Leba, okay, in less than 16 minutes. Okay, to go slightly further away is less than 25 minutes to Serangoon and also Bishan, okay. So uh, connectivity is always important. Uh, that's how people travel to work and that's how people travel to meet their customers as well. So uh, all these MRT lines are really, really important. Okay, before all these businesses, all these MSC were set put into Singapore and set up their HQ in this location. Okay, downtown, downtown CBD uh, is still the financial hub of Singapore. In fact, I want to say it is the financial hub of Asia and also the financial hub of the world okay later i have got certain uh, statistics to show you and some articles and you know uh, the good thing is that covid is really over uh, the returning of workforce to cbd is uh, is already happening there's lesser work from home now compared to one two years ago so people are getting back to uh, early morning taking the train to the office and uh, this is important why because if you're selling a property there it is important that people want to stay nearer to the CBD, right? And there's also uh, the reopening of international borders and especially from China. All these Chinese are potentially coming worldwide, not only to Singapore, but trust me, they will focus on Singapore and come in to buy our property. Why? Because if you look at my second statement there, Singapore is actually a safe haven in many people's uh, point of view, despite having all these geopolitical tension uh, in the European countries, right? And Singapore has always been the gateway hub to Southeast Asia. So a lot of transactions, a lot of money, hot money are coming into our country. And I don't know whether, have you seen all these articles, CBD workspace is in demand again. People are not only renting our CBD workspace, uh, there's also new build buildings set up, okay? Uh, new buildings for grade A office spaces. Right, and you can see Singapore PR buys entire floor of Suntech City, okay, for almost 40 million. Amazon already uh, signed the lease for uh, 370,000 square feet of uh, office, grade A office at 101 uh, IOI Central Boulevard, okay. So not only we want to talk about working space, the CBD trend is also about play. Right, so that day when we walk to Tanjong Paga MRT station, we realize people are putting on their headphones in group doing kickboxing. Okay, that's something that uh, we we don't normally see in the CBD area, but it's already happening. And in this location where Newport is, right, in terms of international play, there's a lot of people who love this location. In fact, they are familiar. Okay, uh, talking about the Formula One. Right, people always come here Singapore during September to go for all these races. Right, for three days they will take time off. Right, imagine if you if you are staying nearby, you probably can experience this uh, very near to home as well. 
right? So this is uh, Wallet Residence. If you all recognize, there's a lot of curated activities at Guaco Tower, right? Singapore River Festival as well. We try to promote diversity and uh, uh, include every community in Singapore. So these are things happening in the CBD area. Then more shops and more outdoor living space, okay, for co for community interaction. So all these are coming up in place. Okay, talking about Anson area, right? So you you realize that all these are like an outdoor living room for all your activities. Okay, they try to link to all the park connectors so that you can have an active life, work, live, and play. They say. Right, so so they want to encourage more residents uh, moving into the downtown core, okay, buying into such property, whether for own stay or for investment. So what is the downtown living trend in Singapore? Right, so first and foremost, before you sell any property, we always want to understand the demographics in CBD, right? So without you knowing, without you knowing, in fact, uh, for the past 10 years, all these have already changed in terms of demographics. Let's uh, take a look in terms of age first. We do some age analysis. That means how old are all these people when they buy the property in CBD, right? So if you can see on the left and on the right, on the left, uh, very clearly you can see this is 2011, right? On the right is 2021, which is a 10 years difference. So in fact, what you can quickly summarize in terms of these two charts is actually a higher proportion of millennials staying in CBD actually increases, right, compared to 10 years ago. More people between the age of 25 to all the way 50 years old, they are coming into CBD, right? So there's a couple of reasons. Probably the, the household size is getting smaller, right? People, in fact, don't need such a bigger space, okay, compared to the, the OCR property. So because of this reason, some of them probably don't even want to get married so early. Some of them don't even want to have a lot of children. That's why uh, having a small size, but in a better location, okay, like downtown core is probably something that your customer can consider. So of course, uh, in terms of male residents or female residents, I think it is pretty much quite balanced. But in terms of age group, this is also to tell all the listeners, okay, ladies and gentlemen, go and reach out to people between Okay, 25 to 50 years old, probably they are your potential customer, okay, who wants to visit our show flat. And also a smaller proportion of generation, we are on age again. So compared to 10 years ago, you realize that the, the seniors, the boomers, okay, number of people staying there, okay, above 55 years old is getting lesser and lesser, right? So I think it's probably a, a, a trend Right, because when I'm getting older, I also don't want to stay in CBD where I see so many people. Probably I want to stay in, in East Coast. Probably I want to stay, stay in OCR whereby I enjoy a bigger space. Probably I'll buy a ground floor or, or, or I will move into a two bedroom condo to enjoy some facilities, okay, with bigger space, right? So uh, this is something that if you meet your millennials, uh, your buyers, uh, probably this is something that you can share with them. So this place will become very vibrant. You see a lot of young people, young family there as well. Okay, so some hidden value of the CBD that I can share with you, right? So uh, you must understand that uh, obviously after COVID, right, when we open the border, uh, when this thing is being lifted, office rental demand actually recovered very strongly. Right, in terms of percentage, since 2020, it has went up 23.4%, right? Meaning to say that uh, jobs are being secured. That's why people need a bigger space for office. Uh, increased demand for residential property as well. Uh, why is that so? Because if I have to go back to CBD to work, I will want to stay near, right? If I can say, stay beside my office, probably it's something uh, some of your buyers would want to have. Right, so not everybody likes to commute from point A to point B. If it is walking distance, why not? And why is this thing good for investors? Is because uh, if I'm coming from overseas as a expat, as a tenant, I, I don't want to stay too far from my office. Also, if it is walking distance, or even if I if I uh, can take a grab, right, two bus stop, three bus stop away, yeah, why not? Okay, it's downtown core uh, condos undervalued, right? So, of course, everybody probably have already visited one Burnham, right? I think there's still some hidden potential 
undervalued in a way for downtown core properties, right? There will be more uh, exciting launches coming up. Okay, after one Burnham, I think this is one very exciting freehold development that you can consider bringing your customer, right? To let them see the difference, okay? How this thing can uh, escalate the price to the next level in this location. Okay, rising value of the downtown core condominiums. So uh, with the opening, with the with the progression of people returning to their office, okay, like I say, you see in terms of statistics, whether is it rental or sales, the pricing has been escalating, moving north. Okay, these are some of the upcoming launches in CBD. Uh, if you're not familiar with CBD, I think that's perfectly fine because majority of the agents, uh, it is quite tough to really understand and have a deep understanding about all this pricing and up and coming development. Okay, it's a place whereby you need to remember a lot of building names, right? So as much as possible, you try to absorb, okay? So of course, we have got this Maxwell House coming up by Chick Ping Seng, okay? And uh, Sing Ha Yi and Chuan Investment, right? So this probably will form out another 330 residential later on, okay? A uh, few months down the road. And probably a lot of y'all from the news, you know this building called AXA, AXA Tower. They will form a 63-story tower with office, uh, hospitality, and residential component as well. And uh, everybody know it as the Alibaba building. Lah, okay? Of course, not only they have got Alibaba, they've got other investment. Okay? And the one running it is Perennial Holdings. So this is one very exciting launch. And our show flat is actually beside AXA Tower. Okay, later I'll show you where the show flat is. And the other uh, interesting development, a billion dollar uh, GLS site is actually this marina view. This is the white site that I was talking about. They're probably going to have uh, near to a thousand residential units with hotel. And uh, we don't, do not have further details. I think that there might be some components like retail, uh, retail component or service apartment. We do not know. We'll keep you updated. IOI properties. Right, and we have got a very small plot of freehold uh, land called the Realty Center, already torn down, we visited a few days ago. This one uh, got a little bit of story. Uh, they potentially can build up to 33 story, right? Uh, 114 residential units with some commercial podium. But if you look, okay, this is actually very near to Newport, but it's a very small plot of land beside one Burnham. But last check, uh, based on newspaper article, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it is available for sale now by the developer, the buyer who, who buys it. I think they may not have plans to rebuild immediately. They are looking for one buyer to buy uh, this plot, okay? And they, they, they just want to have, uh, they just want to flip this property, okay? Maybe you all can Google a little bit more. If I remember correctly, they are looking at about 158 million. So these are some potential launches, okay, the first three is confirmed. The last one, I don't know whether they are going to launch it or not, or they are waiting for the next buyer to do this development, okay, but they are definitely up and coming. Okay, I also uh, put them into perspective. I put a map there so that you total, you, you clearly understand where are all these locations. I also put in the land price. And very importantly, especially if you are my new agents, my new ERA teammates, okay? I want you to look at the break-even price for Maxwell. It can go potentially as high as 2001 and 2003. Can you imagine if you buy Maxwell, right, as a developer, your break-even is 2001, 2003. Potentially, you have to sell at least 3,002 to 3,005 per square foot, right? The smaller one can probably go as high as 3,007, 3,008, talking about the studio or the one-bedroom, okay? Then also for Marina View, Right, talking about Marina Bay and their break even is already 2003 above, right? Because their land price is slightly higher, near to $1,400 per square foot. And being uh, a Marina Bay developer, they are not going to sell cheap for sure, okay? Uh, I, I estimate, okay, they are probably going to launch at least $3,500 to $4,000 in this location. AXA Tower, AXA, Alibaba and Perania. Right, so uh, land price is about one zero five zero. Right, so I want to tell you they probably get they probably get the land price slightly uh, lower, but doesn't mean I buy cheaper, I will sell cheaper. 
okay but what what's gonna happen is that they're gonna benchmark okay and sell because i think it's gonna be another iconic building right and they if you go on site you realize aksa has already uh, slowly being torn down already and these are the four uh, up and coming launches i need all of you to be very familiar and this is uh something that probably your customer will ask you as well okay and this is something different these are existing new launches just now that slide i show you up and coming new launches these are existing new launches that means if you have got potential buyers you can already bring them and and uh sell them all these units we are fine okay you can in fact start showing your customer all these property so as as much as possible okay i show you what your customer potentially will want to compare of course in terms of one burner which is side by side okay with a uh, new port uh they have got about 180 over units left right we have visited the show flat i think you should as well wallet residence you have got some units there about six right penthouses I have got Marina one, three penthouses. Okay, go and sell them. Very nice. I saw Brian advertising at 19 million, right? Okay, mm -hmm. and of course, I have got one free whole uh, penthouse at Sky Everton. Go and take a look. Okay, and if, if you can see the bottom units, in fact, we, we have got the M and we have got uh, Guaco Midtown, which is Midtown Modern and Midtown Bay still available. Okay, I believe your customer who potentially look into downtown core these are the show flats or actual unit that they want to compare so maybe you can bring them uh, starting from now and during this uh showing of viewing you can build some rapport with them tell them that there's this free whole uh, up and coming project okay guys can i can i just share with you you realize okay there, there's some free holes available right if i can go back to the previous slide yeah Maybe you can talk about uh, Realty Center is a freehold, but it's a small development. We don't even know when they are going to launch. We are not so sure, but the rest of them are 99 years. Okay, so this is, this is what's uh, up and coming. And the existing new launch, yes, there's Sky Everton, but we only left with one penthouse. Okay, like it or not, there's always this group of customer who only wants to buy a uh, freehold property. Okay, some interaction. How many of you know one or two customers that they only want to buy freehold one? If you if you have got this kind of customer inside the chat group, can you just type FH freehold FH? And probably if you are that agent uh, who also using your own money, you will only want to buy freehold property. Uh, can you just type FH inside? Right. So I, I don't know why. Seventeen years in the business, I always meet customer. Uh, no matter what script I give them, uh, they only want to buy freehold. So the good thing about participating in CBD, this project called New Product, is got you you got this unfair advantage. Uh. You no need to counter objection. Why buy 99 years? I think it's a plus point uh, when you work on this project. And trust me, when you do lead gen for free whole project, usually you've got more customer, you got more leads. Okay, so that's good news to you. Okay, so same thing as this thing, new launch, uh, because they already sold, some of them are there for a couple of years. I just want to quickly update you guys, okay, in terms of price point, just in case you are not familiar. So we put the minimum transacted price, average transacted price, and also the highest transacted price. So you see, talking about projects in Wallet, you can go as high as $5,000, right? $5,000, guys, uh, the whole Singapore price point has already reached the next level. So I need all of you to quickly accept and catch up with all this pricing, right? So for one burnout can go as high as 3,000. Uh, Midtown Bay, 3,008. Midtown Modern, 4,007. The M, 3,001. Marina, one residences, 3,004. So these are some, some price point that is achieved before. Okay, they have been achieved before. So uh, yeah. These are some price points that you try to rem remember as much as possible when your customer asks you. Okay, so uh, I don't know whether you have seen this business time. CDR trying to add zinc to its portfolio with redevelopment. Okay, so in CBD, the group is progressing on its redevelopment plans for Fuji Jerox Tower. Okay, so Newport is also Fuji Jerox Tower. Okay, the old building name. It is actually a free whole office building. Okay by capitalizing on the URA CBD incentive scheme. This statement is actually uh, put out by Mr. Quack, right? The CDR executive chairman. That's why when government come out with this uh, CBD incentive scheme, 
developers like CDL, they immediately look into their uh, land bank. What do they have in terms of uh, availability? So in, in this case, CDL actually have got uh, Fuji Jerox. So they decided to take advantage of this uh, new ruling. They capitalized increased GFA because they fulfill majority of the requirement. So uh, I'm going to go through seven reasons why Newport Residence by, by CDL is going to be a great project, right? Number one, just in case you do not know, it is going to be a 47 story mixed development, right? Like I say, this is called Fuji Jerox, okay? The old building, and it's going to form a new iconic mixed use. Okay. Uh, why I put the word iconic uh, is because, I mean, think about it, a lot of your developers that you know, Actually, they don't need to spend more money to design something iconic, right? If they just want to sell, they can always build a very simple uh, design. But CDL always pride themselves differently if you have worked with them before. So I'm very blessed. I worked with CDL a couple of times. They always uh, go into designing. They uh, Choosing architect is always uh, something that very different from their point of view, right? Design perspective is also who they want to attract. Why? When you have got good design, you attract people with taste, people with class, right? When people buy, sometimes it's really because your building is iconic, right? So this makes use development. They actually have got residential service apartment and definitely offices, right? The names, uh, I believe, is more or less confirmed, right? In terms of the residential, it is going to call Newport Residences, right? We got 246 units. Okay, service apartment, they are going to call it New Port Plaza, less than 200 units, right? And also we have got uh, offices, they're going to call their office tower New Port Tower, right? So there's three different names. But what you need to remember is definitely New Port, and for the residents, it's New Port Residences, 246 units, okay? Next, uh, we actually did a walkthrough. I don't know whether you, if you all can see the video. I'm going to play this video to you. Uh, it's, it's like three minutes walk, okay? Uh, can you see the white hoarding behind, right? Where we, all the leadership team we are standing, that is actually Newport. We are standing at the traffic light, right? So this is the nearest path that you can potentially walk to Prince Edward MRT station. Let me just quickly show you the video. Okay, can you see the hoarding? This is the up and coming Prince Edward MRT station, right? Of course, I speed up the video a little bit, right? So uh, next time, in a few weeks time, we are going to walk the ground together with you. We are going to prove it to you. It's just three minutes walk, right? If you walk a bit slower, probably you take one more minute, four minutes walk, right? So to me, anything less than five minutes is considered near to MRT station. So it's going to be a very comfortable walk towards Prince Edward. Right. Next. This is probably one of the most important reasons for you to do lead gen, right? You can always sell uh, this freehold in District 2 CBD, right? Just in case you do not know if you are new, freehold probably only make up less than 5% uh, of the total housing unit in Singapore. And probably you already know, uh, GLS can never sell you as a freehold land, right? They always sell you as a 99. So uh, this is really something very special when you are selling new pot. Okay, so majority are 99 years. So freehold, some freehold property, like I say, a lot of customers are looking only at freehold for legacy, uh, for, for long, longevity, and also passing down from generation to generation. Reason number four, I think uh, you guys should have visited a lot of show flat. Right? Uh, why certain customer they only want to buy from reputable developer is because uh, having a good developer like CDL really makes a big difference, right? Uh, I mean, if you are a property agent, you cannot don't know who is CDL. They are probably the biggest boy 
uh, in, in their industry, right? They not only do ultra luck, they do luxury property. In fact, they are everywhere, right? They are in, in uh, your East Coast area, they are in your OCR area, so on and so forth. Okay, very, uh, very smart developer, if you, if you ask me. They actually have got economy of skill in terms of construction. Right, and uh, they have got proven record. Okay, uh, properties such as New Futura, Canning Hill, Pier, South Beach Residences, Boulevard 88, Irwell, Novell 18, Amber Park, so on and so forth. So uh, all these are very nice uh, developments, and I, I think what I like about CDL is that, uh, in fact, in terms of quality, when your customer were to receive keys, uh, typically they shouldn't have any problem because they are uh, very customer centric. They focus on customers experience a lot, right? So uh, this is the fourth reason. I think because they are CDL, okay, that is easier to pitch this property to your customer. Okay, I mean, uh, we, we definitely have met some developers, you know, their quality is not as good, right? You can sell to them, but that's the last property you will potentially sell to them because when they collect keys, uh, they will come to you and complain to you that the quality is bad. And uh, in order to do a long-term business in our industry, okay, I want you to always push good products to your develop uh, to your customers. Okay, reason number five, like I mentioned just now, uh, CDL can always build a normal building and sell, right, slightly cheaper, but they, they do not want, okay, to them it's about pride, to them it's about uh, a different standard in the industry, okay? So uh, in fact, not only they have got one architect, Okay, uh, this development, they are going to have two architects. So in terms of design, okay, they, they actually engage their design architect, this firm from Japan, Nikan CK, right? You can Google them. I, I, I think uh, looking at the photos below, you can see that they always do a lot of iconic projects. Okay, so in terms of design, the, the artist impression that you have seen just now, okay, I believe it's coming from Nikan CK. Right, so you can Google them and find out more, right? So this is the reason number five. Not only we have got this Japanese architect, we also have got this uh, principal architect, which all of you should be very uh, familiar with, which is ADDP, right? I put in a couple of uh, developments that they have done, right? Avenue South. So if you recently drive past Avenue South, it, it is really iconic. Okay, something very uh, special that is standing alone. Okay, in front of Greater Southern Waterfront, Martin Modern, right? If you have visited, it's really world class, a botanical garden team, New Futura, super futuristic, right? And also Tree House, right? So uh, something very special in terms of designing. Okay, so ADDP will be the principal architect, right? Uh, taking care of Newport residents. So not only we have got one architect, we this time round will have two. Okay, so you see, having two architects is already uh, something different. So this is one of the reasons why uh, Newport residence is good. And talking about financial hub, this is probably the reason why your yourself or even your buyer should put money okay into this project, right? So you see on the article it says Singapore overtake Hong Kong as the Asia's top financial center, right? In terms of world positioning, we are third. Okay, there's of course reason. I mean, ranking is just ranking. But why are people coming into Singapore? Because you see, we are the top 10 financial hub in the world on the right article. Second easiest place in the world to do business. I think that's important. People, we don't have natural resources. The only way we can do is do trading. We have got exchange uh, using our central business district. Okay, so money-wise, people have to come in, invest, do their business here. Okay, we also have got all this... Uh, free trade agreements, so on and so forth. In, them, in terms of uh, taxes, right, uh, uh, it's easier to do business here, lower taxes. And uh, very importantly, we also position ourselves in terms of banking very well. We have got more than 200 global banks present in Singapore and third largest foreign exchange center globally. So these are a couple of reasons that I summarized for you. And this makes uh, the reason number six, why Newport is a good a financial hub to put your money into, okay? Okay, reason number seven, right? Of course, it's the prime location, okay? 80 Anson Road will be the, the address, okay? And when you sell, I think to mention the number eight is always something very favorable, like, you know, real estate, 
right? Uh, especially if you sell to the 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 pe people from China, probably eight is something uh, uh, that you and me know that uh, what uh, okay? Because my favorite number is also eight. The road name is also very nice, Anson Road, right? So whoever call Anson can consider buying one unit here. So I show you this uh, Google Earth, okay? Uh, thinking that I can potentially show you the view. Can you imagine this thing go uh, super high, directly in front of you is the Greater Southern Waterfront and also the Sentosa view. And if you're facing this direction, like the two yellow lines, this is potentially facing south and uh, you can really see the ocean. Okay, so I also superimpose uh, Newport here. Don't know if you can see my cursor, right? So I want you all to visualize a little bit because these are two print screens. I don't have any artist impression yet. So everybody take note, this is facing south, right? You know Greater Southern Waterfront is coming up. You'll be facing uh, Sentosa. Next, I show you the west and the east facing. Okay, everybody look at the west first. So potentially if you buy into Newport, okay? So of course, uh, on your right hand side, you potentially are looking into your, your capital area right, your uh, chorus at Keppel, your, your some projects there, okay, so these are the angle that we can look into, and if you are talking about the east facing, if you really tilt your head, uh, uh, you can still see Marina South, somebody just now asked me, I like, can see Marina Bay Sands, uh, I think uh, logically cannot see, uh, okay, so but up and coming, they're going to further develop uh, Marina South, so this is what uh, your view is potentially going to be. Okay, so as much as possible, I try to vis help you visualize uh, how, how Newport, the facing is going to be, what kind of view you potentially will be looking into. I hope this helps. And uh, coming from the other perspective, just now I show you the, the south, right? Now I show you the north. That means coming from Sentosa, we look into Newport. Okay, so this is a perspective whereby you can look into the whole CBD, including uh, Marina Bay. Okay, right, you can see Marina 1 on your right hand side. And uh, behind all this, uh, behind Newport, of course, you can see all the orangey color. These are all your shop houses, right? So uh, what I'm trying to show you here, not only I want to tell you it is totally unblocked, unlike other projects, you might be blocked by another development, another high rise building. In Newport, if you're facing the, the southern side, there were, there's no obstruction so far. Okay. Okay, and I can if I can zoom in a little bit, right? If you can look at this Google Earth on the right hand side, yes, you can see a slightly higher building, and uh, if you look at the left hand side, the building is slightly lower. So we go as high as coming to fifty story, right? So I think uh, a developer has also mentioned residential. That means the properties that you're potentially going to sell is going to start from level twenty three. Okay, some of you probably were mentioned about the highway directly in front of us. Yes, I, I, I totally understand. So it depends on uh, which unit you buy, right? If noise is always a concern, how you can solve this objection is maybe you can encourage your customer to buy higher floor, right? Because um, I understand noise travel upwards, but noise also need power to travel upwards. Okay, they travel to a certain extent. Okay, based on my experience, 30th floor and above, Okay, the, it won't be noisy at all, right? Okay, so 30th floor and above is something that you can get your customers to consider or you get your customer to consider phasing the CBD. If they're buying for investment, they're going to rent it out. Actually, they also know, don't need the Santosa view. Lah. They can just find, uh, find a northern facing and face inside. Uh, exactly what unit facing north, south, east, west, I do not know. I'm just telling you, if you have got such objection, uh, you can counter a little bit with what I've just shared with you. And inside this uh, picture itself, you realize I show you three MRT stations. Of course, existingly, you can walk from Tanjong Paga MRT, which uh, during our uh, walking the site, we will help, uh, we will walk together with you, okay, not only to Prince Edward and also the surrounding, okay. And of course, Prince Edward MRT station, just now I say, you just cut through M Hotel, you'll reach there within less than three minutes time. Of course, the furthest MRT uh, uh, available is ac actually Cantonment MRT, which is on the bottom left, right? So this is a little bit more zoom in, in terms of 
uh, how our CBD look like, where Newport potentially is going to be.